There we go. There we go. Yeah, it's been so nice to get such positive feedback and all your enthusiasm and interest to learn more about IMA since our last um, session. Can you please turn your mics off? Um, yeah, there we go. Okay. Everyone? Yeah, but where is it on there? At the top, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The delights of Zoom. <laughs> All right. Mute. There you go, Joanna. You've done it. <laughs> okay. So let me switch the screen, my screen, to full screen. So I'll be with you in a minute. I'm not mm, speak of you. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. All right. Um, sorry, I'm fluffing about here. Okay, so a little bit the same format as last week, where um, I'll talk and then we'll have time for questions and answers at the end. But of course, interrupt me at any time. Um, you know, just switch your mic on if something's not clear um, uh, or put a note in the chat. Mm. And also we will stop at some point and have a look at maybe with a few of you, there wouldn't be time to do everybody. But if you, you know, if we don't do you this evening, then I'm sure you'll get a lot of insight and a, a grasp of things just by looking at some, you know, hearing what others share and, and feedback they get. So I'm not doing an analysis or consultation on anyone. We're just going to see, you know, so you come to know what type are you and you can maybe the penny will drop with a few things and um, you might be inspired to find out more then about what diet is good for you and, um, you know, are you doing the right things. And this is something you can do to help your physical, mental, emotional well-being. All right. Great. So. Let's start. I'm going to share my screen with you again. And um, this is the one. Everyone sees it? Yay. OK. And let's just shrink that also. OK. So Ayurveda for your health and resilience. And I'm tagging this word resilience onto the end of the title, thinking very much about the months ahead, thinking where we are with um, COVID and how, you know, vaccinated or not vaccinated, we all are aware that we need to take a little extra care hmm, this year. Um, and hopefully with the learning that you'll get um, and inspiration, hopefully, that you'll get from these webinars, you'll be inspired anyway to, you know, know how to work with yourself so that you feel healthier. Uh, yeah. So let's go. And just as we started last week with a quote to kind of inspire the talk, I wanted to do the same this week. And Dr. David Frawley, some of you might have heard of him. He's another favorite of mine. He's, um, he's American um, and yet he's one of the pioneers in um, bringing Ayurveda to the West. And he's written many books. Some of you might have come across them. He teaches courses. I've had the privilege of doing some study with him. And he says, as long as we are not living in harmony with nature and our constitution, we cannot expect ourselves to be really healed. Ayurveda gives us the means. And this is, I put this quote here because this is exactly what we're looking at this, um, this evening. We're looking at um, what does it mean when Ayurveda talks about living in harmony with our nature and our, with nature and with our nature, with our constitution. And what does that mean from an Ayurvedic perspective? And how do we do that? Okay. And then I know some of you have done quite a bit of um, 
work around Ayurveda with me. So this will be a bit of a recap, but it's always good for any of us to recap. Um, so this is what we covered last week in a nutshell. Hmm? Ayurveda is the science of life. And do you remember if you were with me last week, we broke the word Ayurveda down into two. Ayur means life. And Veda is knowledge or understanding. So we can say it's the understanding of life. And it inquires into life, you know, to look at the laws of, the, of life and the um, natural order of um, things within the universe. So Ayurveda looks to understand the nature of the universe and our place in it. To remember that... Um, quote that we had from Dr. Chopra, Dr. Deepak Chopra last week, which was something like, you know, that um, we are part of the universe, the universe is intelligence, and our body is part of the cosmic body. Because Ayurveda recognizes that we are made up of the same building blocks as everything else in the universe. And our bodies and our minds are governed by those same laws that govern the workings of everything else in the universe, because we are part of this universe, right? So of course, we're bound by the same laws. And if we just look back a moment to that quote, so if we are bound by those same laws, if we don't live in harmony with the nature outside of us and our own nature, then we can't expect to be healed. We can't expect to sustain our health. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as we discovered last week, from an Ayurvedic perspective, the building blocks of this manifest world are the five elements, both in their gross manifestation and in their subtle manifestation. So we didn't really look at the subtle last week. So it's enough to say that, you know, the doshas affect the mind. And so that's one um, subtle manifestation of the elements there. Um, and the five elements are, we have them in this nice little diagram at the side, ether, air, fire, water, and earth. And the five elements combine in varying proportions to create all the different species of plants and animals and all the different variety of human beings we see and the different varieties within species. You know, you can see it if you have a dog, just try to look at the different dogs around when you're walking your dogs. It's, it's quite funny. You, once you come to this work, you'll start seeing the batter dogs and the pitta dogs and the kapha dogs and, because the elements are combining in different ways. It means some might have more earth and more water combining, so more structure, more kapha. Some might be like toned, kind of moderate framed bodies and the little, you know, those dogs that walk strutting their chests a little bit, like the pitta is up in them. And then there's a thin, maybe some or maybe nervous dogs just by their, their type, by their nature. And that's a good point, actually, just to draw on. So even by our nature, we can have, because of the nature of the doshas, there can be challenging dimensions to our doshas naturally, not that we do something wrong, but then knowing those, we learn how to live to reduce those challenges or to pacify them or antidote them. Um, remember last week when we talked about how the different elements combine, we looked at some plant species and vegetables. We talked about, um, so we could say, for example, we looked at chili pepper, didn't we? So chili pepper, obviously it's hot, it's pungent to taste. It's red in color, so it has this fire element in it, but it's hollow in the middle, right? And then we have um, cucumber. So it's got, sorry, so the, the, the chili pepper is hollow in the middle. It's got air and ether elements in it also. And then there's cucumber, you know, obviously got a lot of the water element in it. 
or tomatoes we talked about like they're red so they have some fire they can be a little heating but they also have a lot of water in them hmm? um what else can we think about and then also we can think about it's going to be quite pertinent to when we come to look at um autumn and winter you know we can think about the heavy root vegetables like carrots and the beetroot and um, also some of the wintry squash you know where they're quite starchy and they're solid and they're hard to cut through aren't they they have a lot of earth elements in them great so we see that elements combining in different ways to give different qualities and attributes to the various forms and species that we see in this existence. And they combine also in varying proportions to make the three doshas. So do you remember that word dosha? Ayurveda is one of the pillars of Ayurveda is the tri-dosha system, the three-dosha system. And the dosha is like um, a, um, uh, like one of the humors of the old medical system, right? So I think it's nicer if you see me, not just the screen. Um, like the humors of the old medical system. And they combine as illustrated on the slide to the side of the text. So vata is a combination of ether and air, kapha, water and earth, and fire, uh, sorry, pitta, fire and water. Although, as you might remember, I said last week that one of the pitta attributes is not, it's more, it's li got liquid in it, but it's more oily. Hmm? So that's a good thing to remember about pitta and when you think about antidoting. Hmm? So there we have it. The three doshas are vata, pitta and kapha. What do the doshas do? So you've all been filling in your forms or doing the questionnaires, I think, and trying to discover which dosha you are. So which constitutional type you are is, you know, which dosha are you governed by? So we will come to that. But we have all three doshas within us. And we taught last week that Ayurveda is a functional system of medicine. Do you remember? So it's looking at how the body functions where it's maybe started malfunctioning and by understanding the nature of the doshas and their function in the body we can see what's gone wrong and then we know how to bring things back into balance so the doshas are the functional managers within this functional um, perspective view outlook on the body and the mind and how to sustain health and equilibrium and balance vata air and ether elements. So with air, vata is the only dosha that has that is mobile, that has movement. So vata governs all the movement in the body. That means that without vata, pitta and kapha can't function because no matter what we recall their function as being, to do anything, they need movement. So they need vata. So vata governs all the movements that's happening in the body. And pitta, is governing the transformational processes because fire is its dominant element. And fire, we might think it moves, it's got movement in it, but it can't really move, right? It just has to travel across something. It needs a substance to move across. And as it does that, it transforms its nature. Like when it goes across dry grass, when it goes across a piece of paper, it transforms it into something else. So, Pitta dosha is governing all the transformational processes in the body. That's right down to the cellular level. And it does that through what we call agonies, various agonies, which we might talk about as enzymes and acids in the body. Agni translates actually as fire. And we don't just have a digestive fire. We have fires all through all the tissues because we have these transformational processes going on, right? Right down to the cellular level. So that's Pitta Dosha. And then we have Kapha, which is earth and water. And as we discussed last week, when you put those together and you get clay and we all kind of played with it, it's kids and made form with it. So Kapha governs structure. But 
you know, we want these doshas to be in balance, to be in equilibrium. Because if you have too much movement, you know, it's not a good thing, right? We might have hyperflexible joints and we'll be in pain. We might have too much movement in the mind. We were talking about it in class this morning, you know, because we're actually moving into a better time of year. Some people are finding it difficult to sleep. They're feeling a little more anxious than usual. We have too much fire in the body. We've all experienced that. And so we need some fire, but too much, it's just going to start burning the tissues. We get inflammatory conditions. Too much kapha, you know, kapha is structure. Maybe we get too much weight. Maybe we hold too much water. Um, also, maybe we get things like bone spurs and growths. So it's really important to look at, to keep our antenna up and really pay attention to the very first symptoms of, um, you know, even those small symptoms, because they're an indication that the functional managers of the body are getting a little out of whack. And we tend to think it's just part of life. But in Ayurveda, these are the first stages of disease. And these are the easiest stages as such to correct. So we understanding our nature in an Ayurvedic perspective, we have that awareness, we're watchful, we notice when things go a little bit out of balance and we will understand what it is and how to correct it. Okay, so because, you know, these doshas, we can take substances which have the same attributes as the doshas. So if vata dosha is cold and it's dry in nature, if we take cold and dry foods, then the chances are we're giving more of the nature of the vata to our system. So it's likely to go up. Hmm? We don't want it to get too high. We want it to be contained so that it can function in a balanced way, not in an aggravated, elevated way. Hmm? Elevated, I don't mean higher, but just increased. Hmm? Um, same, you know, um, fire, we need it for those transformational processes. But if we start taking a lot of foods which have the same qualities as pitta dosha, I mentioned oily, so a lot of oily foods, spicy foods, and maybe it's sunny outside, so the body's getting hot as well. Then, you know, pitta might start, that fire might start raging a little bit. We might get the first symptoms and then we can go, aha, I know the nature of pitta dosha, its qualities. I know what's happening in my environment or through my lifestyle, what I've been putting inside me. And by the way, we'll look at this, but, you know, it might not just be a lifestyle and foods, uh, foundational, but also we'll see the way we use our minds. So the way we use our minds can bring a lot of heat into the body, right? If we're driven, if we're pushing ourselves, it can also maybe bring a lot of movement into the body. If we have a lot of stress and cause to worry a lot because things with family or work or everything that we all have to face at certain times, transitional stages of life are starting to um, show themselves and confront us. So the doshas, yes. Um, you know, by how we live, we can affect the doshas for better or worse. So for our health or um, to the detriment or the, the betterment, is that a word, of our health? Or, you know, also then they are in the environment because all the elements are in the environment, right? And they combine in the environment um, to make the doshas. Ayurveda recognizes the importance of the cyclical nature of existence and that the cyclical nature of this world is it affects us. So the cycles of the day and night, the cycles of the seasons and the stages of our life. We talked about this last week also. So this is what I wanted to underline, that it means that the doshas are inherently unstable. They're likely to go out of whack. Okay, so it's a little bit like walking the tightrope to sustain our health. It's not going to happen if we just go on blindly living habitual ways because it's what we've always done, eating the same foods because it's what we love and it's what we've always eaten, even though we know it's creating this and that problem in our families, in our lines maybe. So... 
In sum, the times of day, night, the changing seasons and the stages of life affect the doshas of the body and the mind. And so the changing cycles of nature of existence are affecting our health. So to sustain our health, we have to live in alignment with those cycles of nature and also with an awareness of their aggravating factors and work to antidote those factors. So what does it mean when I keep saying to antidote the nature of the, or the attributes of the seasons or the day or the night? So it means that if, say, let's take the example of the season that we're coming into, it's a vata season, and one of the attributes of vata is that it's dry. And when you dry something, like when the leaf becomes dry, it becomes lighter, yeah? So when it becomes lighter, it will, like if you think of a very dried piece of wood, it's lighter and it might blow in the wind like a small piece. Whereas a heavier piece, because it's got that water in it, it's heavier, it might not move so much. So it becomes the same in our system. Maybe our mind will stop moving too much. So we apply the opposite to our bodies. So one of the things I'm going to be recommending next week is that you oil inside and outside. I wrote about it recently. It's on my blog. Go and have a look if you didn't read it on Snehan. Snehan is oiling. And Snehan, I mentioned it in the blog, not only means oil, it's a word for love. So when we apply oil to the body, not only is it an act of love to the self, but it's also like making us feel love more because we're less agitated, restless, there's less movement going on because the oil is heavy and it's not dry, right? It's, it's, um, it's liquid, it's lubricating. Internal snehan also I'm going to talk about. So it's things like that. Hmm? And nature, you'll see when we look at the seasons, nature also gives us the foods that antidote the effects of the seasons. So just if you look at the foods that we get in the summer season, cooling cucumbers, cooling mint, cooling melons. Hmm? And then at this time of year, in our, in our environment here in this region, we have all these wonderful apple trees. Pitta, I said, is oily as well as hot, right? And the apples, I think I mentioned it last week. Not only are they cooling, they're drying. So if we, just in case we have excess heat in the body from these summer months, nature's giving us exactly the foods to pacify that. So that's how we antidote. We're aware of the attributes of each dosha and we take the opposites, okay? So everyone's all right? Any questions? Information overload? No, you're okay? Kind of. Yeah, Rosie, you want to ask a question? Okay, we see feet. <laughs> oh, there you are. Hi. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Right. Um, did you say apples are drying? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that surprised me, that's all. That's yeah, they, they are. They it, when you eat an apple, a raw apple, just notice what happens in your mouth. Oh, okay, yes. So it's not the water or redness. If you cook the apple, it will change its quality, though. Yeah. If you cook the apple, slice it, and cook it with a little water and some cinnamon and some raisins or something like that, it will change the quality. It will not be drying or cooling. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. fine. Okay, I, I accept that. <laughs> Good. Try it out. Yeah. Try it out yourself. Try it raw and then cook it and try it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So let's have a look at the Ayurveda types because we'll move into looking at well, what am I? What is my nature? What am I going to be working with for my life? You know, because as I said last week, the constitution has created a conception. So you are this type for life even though you might be affected by other doshas. So I have these three women here 
someone told me off, my friend told me off, he said, stop putting young women for pictures. <laughs> but it's hard to find pictures of, you know, of people who aren't young women. Okay, so um, I should have swapped these around a little. So the lady in the middle is actually Vata. And I look at her, something in me tells her, maybe it's the stance that she's kind of pitta vata, but it's the closest I could find. You can see she has these lovely long fingers and she has slight bones. And so we have vata, we have the pitta lady, athletic, toned body. We did this last week. And we have the lovely kapha lady, a little broader joints, stockier frame, but lovely, curvaceous, and broad chested kaphas, like that heart, that that earth element, earth nourishes us. Hmm? So being in the presence of a kapha person, there's something very nourishing about it. Kapha hugs, you know, they're those big, like broad chested people we love to hug. <laughs> so what I want you most to look at here though, is to see that actually there are not just three types, not just vata, pitta, kapha, there are seven types that you can be. So you can be a pure type, pure vata, pure pitta, pure, pure kapha, some people are. Others are a combination of two. So vata pitta, vata kapha, or pitta kapha. And you'll have varying elements of each of the two if you're a dual type, okay? So maybe you'll have a vata structure, but a pitta metabolism, a pitta capacity to digest, or a pitta mind as well in that case. Hmm? Maybe pitta kapha, you know, you'll have that kapha solid grounded structure. So you're not going to burn out and drive like a pitta, you'll be a little more contained. But you will have the motivation of a pitta that sometimes, you know, kapha is slow and takes their time. Vata kapha, you know, they're kind of almost opposites, aren't they? So maybe this kapha will have the nice groundedness that vata needs. And Vata will give Kapha the, the movement, the inspiration, also the enthusiasm for like an injection of that to, to make a really nice combination in balance. Maybe a very difficult combination when not in balance because they're so opposite. Very few people are this tridoshic type, very few. It's rare. Vata, Pitta, Kapha. They have equal amounts of all three. And the thing is, I think the more we come into balance, according to our type, the more it might look like we're all three, okay? Because our symptoms are not so apparent. The symptoms of the doshas are not so apparent when we're in balance. It's okay. So here I've inserted another quote because we're moving into like pulling it together now. According to Ayurvedic principles, then, by understanding oneself, we've been looking at this, yeah, by identifying one's own constitution and by recognizing what are the sources of the doshic aggravation, what is going to aggravate my doshas and so give me symptoms. Do you understand now why symptoms would come because your doshas are aggravated? Yeah. Is it clear? Elaine, is it clear? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Because you have too much, if you're putting into your system or living in a way that creates too much of one of the qualities of your doshas, then you get doshic aggravation. Yeah? Too much dryness, too much cold, too much heat, too much water, holding. So by recognizing sources of doshic aggravation, one can not only follow the proper guidelines to cleanse, purify, and prevent disease, but also uplift oneself into a realm of awareness previously unknown. I love this, okay? Because this is where those sister, sisters of Ayurveda and yoga, they're sisters, they're sister sciences. They really complement each other, support each other. And the whole goal is I've talked about balancing, pacifying, pacifying the doshas to create a harmony, to create an equilibrium, because from there we feel well, we feel healthy, we feel at home in our bodies, our minds are content. And this, according to Ayurveda, is our natural state of being. We're programmed for health and happiness. 
We are programmed for health and happiness. And when we understand our doshas and how to live in harmony with life and existence and according to the rules of life, then those uh, health and happiness are, um, they're available to us. And, you know, these are Vedic sciences. They're from the Vedas, which are part of the spiritual tradition of um, India. And so um, I want to use this word sattva, which some of you will know who studied with me. And sattva, where as a yoga practitioner, so someone on a spiritual path, we are practicing yoga and Ayurveda together to create this word sattva in our being. Sattva is difficult to translate directly. It's a combination of light, purity, equilibrium, harmony. And when we're in, because when we're in that state of sattva, when everything is in balance, we are not so fragmented and pulled here and there. The teaching is that then we can get a glimpse of um, our deeper or more essential nature or the spiritual dimensions of our being, the more unlimited and connected dimensions of our being. Maybe we will then actually start to experience that it's not just a theory or a teaching that we're part of the universe. We will begin to experience this connectivity and oneness. So this is what Dr. Ladd is talking about here. It also allows you to uplift oneself into a realm of awareness previously unknown. And maybe we think, I just want to feel okay. I just want these headaches to go away. I just want my digestion to work properly. But if there's a purpose to life from the Vedic tradition, it's that we know ourselves. And yes, we come to know ourselves on this quite fundamental Ayurvedic level of understanding how our doshas work and so understanding how to antidote and how to live in alignment. But also, you know, ultimately the purpose of life is that we know who we are essentially in our nature as part of the universe, as part of this whole existence and with that same intelligence available to us. All right, having detoured a little bit into something quite profound, <laughs> I'm going to pause here because we're going to get into the, or maybe I'll talk here about the physical and the psychological makeup of Vata, Pitta and Kapha. And then we can have a look with some of you, I'll put the gallery view on, we can have a look at some of your findings from the questionnaires. So I'm going to take the physical first of each one and then the psychological. Okay, and remember some of you might be a mix. Um, of a couple. So Vata, we said last week, we already know it's air and ether elements. So little tissue, long bones, long fingers. There's not much earth element there. So there's not much structure. So they tend to be naturally thin, slender, tall or small, but light in frame. One of the attributes of Vata is subtle light also. So they have this kind of frame. We know also that one of the attributes of vata is dryness. So physically, they can tend towards dry skin, okay, maybe dry hair, maybe also dry stool, tendency towards constipation. Later in life, maybe brittle bones, maybe more fine wrinkles because of the dryness of the body. Psychologically, I'm going to talk about imbalance, in balance, not imbalance, in balance when I talk about the psychology, because so often in the West, when we talk about the psychology of the doshas, it's a little bit in a detrimental way. It's a little bit about when they're out of balance, but each has its positive side. Vata, you know, they have that movement in the mind, they have that lightness, so they're creative. They're inspired, they can be enthusiastic, they're visionaries, they have ideas. And because of their elements, their air ether elements, they um, make very good, they have naturally, they're maybe inclined towards spiritual paths, spiritual inquiry. And they will have a bigger 
great affinity with that and they will um you know it will sit well with them with their nature because they are light they are like not of the earth in a way and keeping grounded and keeping on the earth can be a challenge for that so um creative adaptable flexible as well in their minds because there's this um you know movement thing so they're not so set in their ways you know and they'll go and watch the movie you want to watch right and then if someone else tells them well someone else you would want to go and watch a different movie again then i'd be happy to go with that movie these are your better friends yeah yeah i'm all right i'll go with that and then if the other person says and then I want to see that other one. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll go with that. This is better. So quite amenable, personable, inspired, sociable also. These are your social butterflies because they're moving, moving, moving. So they will tend to have um, a lot of friends, but maybe not necessarily such deep connections. Pitta. Okay, more moderate frame, naturally, um, maybe in youth, like naturally a toned body, quite athletic looking body. They also have an enthusiasm for life, but in a, a different way, not this kind of creative ideas, visionary sense, but a little more goal oriented, you know, they'll have an idea and they want to do it and they want to see it through. The pitters will be out of bed, you know making their way in the world um and um yeah they have so they have this fire physically you know so they have this capacity they have this strong digestion because their fire is good um and quite a fast metabolism really And they have also this fire in the mind then. So a pitta type will have, you might see they have like, pitta is color, has color as well. So you might see they have like freckles or they might have red or brown hair, you know, but we have to take into consideration um, our ethnic roots with these kind of statements. But in terms of the eyes, like Vata will have maybe small darting eyes because there's a lot of movement. Pitta, these are your friends with the piercing eyes because they have this fire in the mind. And so they have this kind of, just like fire can trans move across paper and penetrate paper. Pitta have this penetrating mind and it's kind of reflected in their eyes. I think we all know these people with quite an intense gaze. Um, so this is Pitta, but they do have a very sharp intellect and a capacity to grasp things quickly. By the way, um, Vata will grasp things quickly also, but Vata will forget quickly. And I have to keep referring back to notes. Pitta will grasp things quickly and will be less likely to forget. And Pitta will really like, um, no, no, um, how to, yeah, they'll like, know the steps. They'll remember the steps of how to do something and how to, um, you know, see a project through successfully. This kind of thing, Pitta will be good at. And I'm not going to go into, you know, when it gets out of balance, but I think you can get an idea with both of these. You know, if there's a lot of movement and a lot of ideas going on and they're quick to forget, then maybe Vata doesn't really see its projects through often. There's too many going on. They're on to the next one. They like the new. And also, you know, um, because of the movement, maybe they can get a little bit anxious or a little bit busy in the mind. So they can get forgetful, confused. Pitta. Um, on the other hand, maybe a little bit overdriven, a little bit overly goal oriented. If they love competitive sports, they will be good at them, but they might push themselves too hard and maybe burn out a little bit. Kapha, Kapha we've seen already will have this bigger structure and more tissue. We talked about this. And Kapha will have the slowest metabolism. I talked about this last week. Yeah. They tend to be cold in nature. So I'm doing the Ayurveda body treatments at the moment. And it's really a nice confirmation if I've done like the Ayurveda diagnosis 
and I touch the skin of a Kapha person, it is cold to touch. A Pitta person's skin will be warm to touch, and a Vata cool, because air is cool, like cool breeze. Um, Kapha has the slowest metabolism, but they have a strong metabolism also. So they don't get sick very often. They have a good immune resistance naturally, unless their lifestyle starts to build congestion in the body because of their innate tendencies. But let's stay with the positives. They have good endurance. So I talked about the combinations, some pitta, kapha. A lot of the athletes that you see maybe in the Olympics could be this pitta, kapha, um, combination because the pitta will give them the fire to get out of bed and practice, practice, they'll have that motivation, and the kapha will give them the endurance to sustain their training. Okay, not burn out. Um, so, what else can we say for kapha? Um, very kapha don't, doesn't bear a grudge, kapha is very forgiving. Kapha has a very kind of wants to nourish and nurture him or herself but also others there's like this um you know just like the mother energy is one of nurture and nourishment we can say really the kapha person has this quality um they might have fewer friends but more deeper meaningful i mean long-lasting friendships relationships They're forgiving, okay? We all need Kapha friends. <laughs> and they will be slow to grasp things and slow to forget. They're very methodical. And Pitta might be motivated towards success, but so is Kapha. But whereas Pitta will be motivated towards success for status or personal self-esteem, for Kapha, it will be for security for stability, for steadiness, because these are the qualities, steadiness, stability are the qualities of Kappa. So they want to feed that, they want to nourish that, they have an affinity with that. Okay, let me just see what my next slide is. Yeah, you can stay here, okay. So let me put it on gallery. Who is, uh, can I get it bigger? I don't think I can see more of you. Um, anyone like to share what they found from their questionnaire? And if it's, um, if the penny's dropping a little bit, what they think they are. So let me give you an idea. Whatever came up as the highest, if there's a big gap, say you've got, say, nine Kapha, 11 Vata, and then 20 Pitta, then you're a pitta. If there's a big gap between the highest one and then the second total, then you're a pure type. If the two are close together, just a few between them, then you're a dual type. Okay. So what do we have? Any pure types? Um, Rosie, I don't know how you're doing it, but you seem to be drawing on my slide. <laughs> Do you all see it? <laughs> Stop it, because I don't know how to un I don't know how to undo it. <laughs> all right, maybe she's trying to get her mic on and press the wrong button or something. Um, Emma, did you want to share? Um, well, I kind of need a bit more kaffa, I think. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm no um, Vasha. Sorry, I'm pretty much. Um, I got 12p, 11k, and just 7v. So I think I need a bit of more Vasha in my life. So, um, yeah, it's good. So you're a Pitta Kapha type. But yeah. rather than, let's not think I need more of because I haven't got Vata. Think oh, okay. of the finer qualities of your type. Oh, okay. And um, what lifestyle shifts might allow you to... Um, experience your strength psychologically and physically mm. I mean, really you know how do we reduce the weaknesses that, that like the mm. um the not so the negative tendencies let me use that word but you know okay. the tendencies that are not supporting our health and happiness 
Mm. Like maybe with Pitta, the tendency to be overdriven or Pitta as well, because there's too much fire. I'm not at all saying this is you, Emma. I don't experience you like this at all. It's just an example. You know, because Pitta, there's too much fire. So, you know, they can be critical or irritable. So we can think like that, you know, how can I um, experience more? You know, how can I pacify that? tendency by pacifying my mental fire so I experience more of the positive heat wholesome dimensions of my nature and then so does everybody else <laughs> um, and we're all a lot happier so Catherine... it's, in, it's interesting what you're saying because I could identify definitely with the um the pitta and the kapha one I I, I I could see I was just literally wavering between the two Brilliant. I could see I could see myself in that I didn't really find much um vata at all yeah. but I think I'd quite like to be more vata <laughs> yeah and maybe I, I need to change my diet or something I don't know yes so it's it's a good line of thought in that way Emma because the antidotes will be vata foods yeah or foods that have the vata attributes not vata yeah. foods that's confusing so foods that have the vata attributes so what would they be so, you know, I don't so much want to say that because I haven't done a full assessment with you. So if I tell you, you know, like vata, vata aggregating foods, the foods that are going to put vata up, like cold foods, dry foods. But I don't want to tell you to go away and start eating lots of those because that could create a whole other set of problems. Okay. So think more about, you know, like, so kapha is heavy. Mm. Vata is oily. So... Mm -hmm. You feel like a sluggishness, both oil and like heavy foods. Mm. You want to be reducing. So just okay. reduce the attributes that you already have a lot of. That's the best way to think of it rather okay. than think about antidoting your cells, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let, let, let me or someone else help you antidote or, okay. or learn a little bit more, come more in depth into it with me. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. See it. Great. I, I don't want to take too much away from the meeting because I, I don't want to swamp the conversation but I was really interested one of the questions you asked about the um the seasons do you like autumn winter cold warmth heat I genuinely love all of the seasons I don't hate the sun I don't hate the cold I actually really embrace each season as it arrives so where where would I put myself there I mean is that yeah. is some of the some of the questions are a little obscure, but what I'd invite you to do then now you have this um, awareness and particularly mm. on the next stage where we'll look at the seasons is to just notice, take mindfulness to your body and your mind and how they change through the okay. season, because maybe, you know, you have this love for each of our seasons. They all have mm. their, don't they, which is great. But notice which ones actually, hey, yeah, actually, I always start to feel a little less, I sleep a little less well every year in the autumn. Or, yeah, I always get these congestive respiratory coughs and colds and things in the spring or a little bit mm. more. Yeah, okay. How they affect you. So where do you feel strongest, you could maybe say. Okay. 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 Great cool. question. Thanks, Emma. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Hey, John. Um, ah, sorry. I just muted you by mistake. At the moment. Can you unmute? Ah, that was my fault. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Are we looking at the pre um, the lifetime or the current? A lifetime. Yeah, it's a good question because the current is like Mm, then we'll see what's gone out of balance through the difference. There. Well, they're, they're basically almost exactly the same anyway. So um, I'm I'm definitely split. I'm on the lifetime. I'm twenty. I forgot Pitta and seventeen Kapha. Okay. And then on and then on the current, I'm eighteen Pitta and nineteen Kapha. So I'm I'm only two batter on either of either yes. of them. Yeah. So it's gone up a little bit. Yeah. Well, the batter is the same on both. It's two on both of them. Okay. Yeah. So it's just the kapha ah, and pitta. So are... Yeah, they've come closer to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. So what what does that base 
that basically mean? Because I can, I can see myself in both of them, but I'm definitely not athletic. Yeah, so you will have um, maybe more the pitta psyche, more the pitta mind. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? And yeah. like a sharp mind and like um, to be involved in things and motivated with projects and to see them through. And so then maybe the structure and the physique is more kappa. And maybe if your mind is more that type, maybe your metabolism also is more um, uh, pitta type. So, you know, is it, do you digest most things well? I don't, I'm not asking you to answer. Yeah, I do. I do. I never have digestive problems. Yeah. So not sluggish, not heavy, not constipation. So mm. you can see, so Joanna has this nice, like, curvy lovely kappa structure and strength and she doesn't get obviously she's healthy because not much has changed from her lifetime mm -hmm. um doshic state to the current there's very little change so you know um but then this um pitta capacity to metabolize great but I, but i have a definite tendency to put weight on um uh, and okay and usually when I, when I'm on, I mean, I feel out of control. So like in the lockdown, whereas most people put on half a stone, I put two stone on. So it's that total lack of control of what's going on around me. So how do I, how do I balance that? Um, well, through that, it's like, and it's something you've mentioned to me in um, class before, mm -hmm. which you've already taken into your life from the yoga. It's like kapha out of balance. Kapha, when they feel pressured, they will comfort eat. Yeah. And go for the sweet foods. So that's an awareness. And also, you know, then if you came for a treatment, then there are herbs we can give to take the sweet cravings away, this kind of thing. So do I need to balance that because I'm very low on vata? Should I be eating more vata type? No, it's similar to what I said to Emma. Not necessarily, no. Um, um, just think of the qualities of kapha. So if you feel you're putting weight on, you're holding water, um, it's quite difficult without going further. So what I don't want to do here is get into telling you individually, personally, yeah, sure, sure. What, what you should do, because I need to see a much bigger picture. And what I would need to talk to you about is think about like, because there are things like the tastes of the foods. We have the six tastes. Mm -hmm. And there are certain tastes that will put the vata up, but put the kapha down. So it's more like rather than me telling you to go to foods which are drying and, and light, which I might do in certain circumstances, ask you to favor those kind of grains, which have those kind of attributes. I don't want you to suddenly start eating a lot of puffed cereals <laughs> by vata type because of this kind of thing. So we have to... Um, go intelligently so I would say again be aware of the kapha attributes and the pitta attributes kapha cold heavy dense stable mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so you can move more like do faster movement and exercise to combat that okay to speed that side of yeah exactly <laughs> to speed that type of that's kapha that type of your metabolism up. Mm -hmm. and then if like you've got this pitta metabolism, you process things well, then you know that's the fire in you. So you want to be careful that you're not going to aggravate that with too much oily, spicy foods or going for the junk when you feel stressed. Which is what I do. <laughs> but by the way, like if you pit sweet taste pacifies pitta. So naturally sweet tastes, dried fruits, sweet grains, not sugar. And pacify pitta if you uh, you know, but then the sweet taste will give too much kapha because kapha is already it's one of the tastes of kapha. Okay, so it's good. So there's more to learn, Joanna, and then uh, you know, and then you can really start to work this way with yourself. Yeah, thank you. Great. Should we do one more? I'll keep it short, then we can get through the seasons. Anyone, anyone a pure type? Elaine. Yeah, I think I came, I, from the questionnaire, I came out 
is a very high level for um, CAFA, like 25, so, and then only six and seven of BATA and PITA. So that and seems very high. And over the lifetime as well, it was very similar numbers. So CAFA it is. Great. And did you recognise, does it make sense to you when you hear Absolutely. about the CAFA trade? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I really sort of felt that was very, you know, a good picture of what I'm like. Great. It's good. So, everyone, thank you. Thanks for sharing. And hopefully, like, Penny dropped a little bit for others of you listening. And I'm sorry I can't really give very personalised advice like that because that wouldn't be fair and might even make things worse for you. But what we can do to guide you to personally take care of yourself is to look at the seasons. OK, and so how the seasons might impact your type and when you need to maybe be careful. So let's move on. We've done that. Why have I got Rose's red lines all over, Rosemary's red lines all over my screen? <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. I was trying to get to me. I'm only joking. It's, it's fine. Someone I'll, have will to bring, I'll have to bring my iPad in. And <laughs> Someone will show me how I'll work it out, how to erase them. It's fine. I'm just trying to get to gallery view. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's have a look at the nature of the seasons. So we know a little bit about the nature of our doshas, and we know that the doshas govern the seasons. So here they are. In India, we have they um, work to a six-season model. So if you read some Ayurveda books, they might tell you a little differently to what I'm saying now, but I'm going with what. I was taught, which was based on our four season um, climate. In the kitchen. Even That's though we're calling it a, um, a even though we're calling it a three season approach. So you'll see I've split winter into early winter and later winter. And early winter I've put with autumn and later winter I've put with spring. So we have autumn, early winter as a Vata time of year, which if you remember, one of the things I said about Vata at least last week, I'm not sure if I said it this week, I don't think I did, is that Vata has the least resilience. Maybe I did say it again this week. The least um, strength okay, and endurance. They're the most delicate physically and maybe also mentally, emotionally. So, um, and here we have this season coming, this Vata season coming at a time when we've got this virus going on. So this is why alarm bells are ringing in my brain saying, we all need to take the extra vigilant this season, okay? Um, so, of course, the nature of this season then is all the Vata attributes, it's drying, okay? Look at the nature around, the leaves become dry, the grasses become dry in the autumn. You might find in the autumn, and we tend to think it's just the central heating, but it's actually the season as well. Our skin becomes drier. Your hair, your eyes might be feel, become drier. And maybe particularly in the early autumn in the seasonal transition, we sleep less well. Okay, so yes, this is how we can start to antidote, okay, with the seasons quite safely. And what I'll say is that if you are a Vata type, you're more likely to go out of balance in a Vata season, okay? If you're a Kapha and Pitta type, you still want to be aware of the nature of the season, but Vata types will have to be super vigilant to take all the Vata prescriptions for lifestyle and their nutrition and their diet. Kapha, so later winter and spring. So why would this be a Kapha time of year? Well, in the late winter, um, we've generally had this heavier diet through the winter. So let me come back to Vata a moment. So in the autumn, nature gives us the foods to antidote the effects of the seasons. So we want to eat seasonally, okay? So um, root vegetables, starchy vegetables, so those heavy winter squash I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. We get swedes, we get parsnips, don't we? 
these foods that our ancestors used for the festive period. And it's like they're stocking up on all the foods they need to combat the effects of the season. And nature was giving them just those foods. We get the nuts in the trees and nuts are oil rich, right? So this is combating the drying effect of the Vata season. So if you're a Vata type, you can enjoy nuts. Um, maybe, you know, nuts are a very dense food, by the way, very concentrated food. So don't eat a bag full. <laughs> you know, eat maybe a half a dozen, soak them, eat half a dozen. But if you're kapha, maybe you don't need to be going for the oily foods because you already have oil and that heaviness in your system. But maybe it's more the lifestyle that you need to pay attention to and eat for your type. Um, so let's move on to kapha because I'm aware of time. I don't want to keep you too long. Um, late winter, spring. So by this time in the late winter, we've had this heavier winter diet. And think about how we feel after Christmas. We often feel sluggish, heavy, uh, can't get going. If you can think back to those January, February, difficult months, aren't they? Um, this is the energy of those months. And then we get into spring and on top of it, there's more moisture in the earth and in the environment. There needs to be more moisture in the earth and the environment so that the shoots can start to come through, so things can start to grow. Maybe, you know, the snows and the ice starts to melt and the ground is less hard, less batter, more soft, more mulchy underfoot. And this starts to affect us also. The damp, the moisture in the environment starts and the cold starts to affect us. And so this can become a season of those like congestive, chesty coughs and illnesses. And so nature again is giving us the foods to combat that. It gives us foods which are a little bit astringent in nature, drying maybe bitter taste in nature. So all that congestion that's built up, maybe clogging the lymphatics also, um, can be cleared from the body. We get roots as well. Our ancestors would have eaten the roots that are in the earth because there's so little food around and that is also a key for spring. So, and those roots are often very good for the liver, like the dandelion root, the, um, yeah, the burdock root. So it helps to clean all the heavy fats from the previous season's diet. And in spring, actually, even though we tend to think of it as like this abundant time of year, there's actually the least produce around. So nature is inviting us to eat less in the spring. And actually, kapha doesn't need a lot of food. Kapha is a type, if you have kapha in your nature, then particularly in spring, don't eat breakfast. If you need something, just eat a piece of stewed fruit, eat very lightly. And often kapha types, that's actually a relief because they're not hungry in the morning. That might ring a bell with some of you, but we've been conditioned that we should have a good breakfast, but it's not true for everybody. And then, of course, we come to the summer and we have this fire coming up, some more heat in the environment, which we all love. So if you're a pitta person and if you're a particularly driven, um, maybe stressed pitta person, like, the, you know, busy, pressured businessman, we all know, super motivated, working really hard to provide for the family, Maybe with the heat as well, it's all a little bit too much. You're going to get super agitated and get a short fuse. So cooling foods, cooling breath, cooling postures, relaxing the effort, taking time out. And again, nature gives us those foods. And we've talked about it already. So there's the key. Eat for your type. So eat the foods of the season. Start to look at foods and think of the elements. 
So I, I don't, in these webinars, want to give you lists of what to eat for each season and what to eat for your type. What I'd like you to do is rather start looking at the foods in this from this Ayurvedic perspective. Okay, try to taste them. Have they got a natural sweetness or have they got a bitterness? The bitter taste, by the way, is reducing. That's why we have the bitter, you know, like the spring greens. Because it's going to reduce that excess from the winter diet, the early winter diet. Any questions on this? Helpful, useful? I mean, it's a case of, you know, something you've got to go and try out and put into practice. But... Um, yeah, Emma? Hi. Yeah, I was just going to say, because I think I'm mostly, although I think I'm pretty much between pitta and kapha, I think I do seem to be a bit more pitta. And I get terrible hay fever in the summer. So do you think, yeah. does that make sense to you? Absolutely makes sense. And there's a nice protocol in Ayurveda, but we would need to start working on it like in November, something like okay. that. Yeah. Okay. And the herbal protocols and dietary and lifestyle. And I've, I've worked on people and it's been good, you know, the symptoms, like one girl came recently, but she didn't finish the program through. But even though mm. she didn't finish it through, even so her hay fever was so much reduced. Okay, that's good. We can maybe talk about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's absolutely good. Uh, yeah, spot on. Okay, yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Anything with an itis on the end of it, of course, there's a pitta dimension to it because there's an inflammation in it. Shall I move on? Let me put it on the gallery. Yeah, is it good? It's helpful? Yeah. So three causes of disease in Ayurveda. One is the wrong use of the mind. So wrong use of the intellect, wrong use of your senses, a misuse of your senses as well. So I talked about it last time, I think, how overstimulated we are and how this ex super extra input um, into our senses these days and with visuals, with sounds, tastes, all the varied tastes that are available, which is wonderful. Also, you know, we have to be careful that we don't overstimulate the senses because that will have a whole effect on our on our whole being wrong use of the intellect wrong understanding wrong response to situations and you know filters the senses and maybe not filtering the information in properly for the mind and then we respond differently and then we create disharmony and then the third one is effect of the seasons which hopefully now you can understand so if you're a vata person and then this environment becomes very vata, then suddenly all those attributes of vata are coming into your system even more. And so you're likely to experience some kind of symptoms. And so think of antidoting. That's one thing you can do on your own is to think to antidote the seasons of your type. Okay, by eating those foods that nature is giving you at that time. Like you go more full on with it when you're that type. But again, of course, this is like just an introduction, just to point you in the direction. But to go out and do it on your own, if there are books you can do more with me. Okay, so you can get more help out there. This just gives you an idea of where you want to start looking, hopefully. Can I move on? So um, we've really gone a little bit through this, I think, antidoting the effects of the seasons, haven't we? I can look about it a little bit in lifestyle also. So Vata, you know, in the Vata season, naturally the season is inviting us to do less. Nature is quieting down. We want to quieten down. Yeah, we can say chance would be a great thing. I've got my family. I have to work on top of it. You know, particularly for women, we're often doing both. Hmm? So, but like I said today in one of the classes, please schedule good rest time for yourself. You know, there's this old saying, isn't there? If you meditate 20 minutes every day, if you don't have time to meditate 20 minutes every day, do an hour. Meaning the time when we feel more pressured, that's when we really need to set it aside. 
And vata time, because it's a time, vata has movement. So it's a time when our system might get a little more agitated and restless. This is likely to be a time when we need to schedule nice rest and align with nature, slowing down and kind of moving to prepare for hibernation and going to sleep in a way for the winter. So come September, we want to be thinking like this. And um, I'll look more specifically at this lifestyle and things next time we meet. Um, and you can think also in terms of the exercise. So I think for all of us, but particularly Vata, we can think more of exercising in a Vata way. So less demanding, less endurance. And those of you that are doing the seasonal Ayurveda yoga with me know that our practice in the spring in the Kapha time was much stronger, was much more challenging for the body. But um, I, I don't know, Jude's here, maybe she wants to say something on this, because for me personally, I could not do that Kapha practice right now. We're heading towards the Vata season because I'm the Vata type. I don't have that endurance. But I could draw on that endurance in the Kapha time of year to bring the cleansing and the moving of the lymphatics that I needed. Is Jude still with us? She might have had to go to family. Yes, she's there. Jude? Can you unmute? Good. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Did it register for you that as well? It does hugely, actually. Um, yes. <laughs> When I think to what we were doing, as you say, earlier in the year, um, I just be in a heap now at the moment because this is very, this is quite hard work at the moment as a, as a VATA. Um, and I, I didn't pipe up before because obviously I'm, you and I have done my um, questionnaires and what have you before. Um, if I can just say to the, to the other ladies, um, and this will make me sound like a bit of an advert <laughs> now, for Sharma, but if you get the chance to actually go for a proper consultation, it, it's hugely interesting, um, but it really works. How much of it you decide to actually use in your everyday life moving forward is entirely up to you. But if you actually embrace it, um, it, has a, it has a huge effect um, on everything that you do. Um, and it, it's well worth it. As I say, I'm sorry, Sharma hasn't paid me to say that, by the way. <laughs> um, but it all makes a lot more sense. This is, this is great, but it, it's such a small part. Um, but it, it's, it's those little light bulb moments where you think, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, as Joanne said, you know, you think, oh, yes. I, I can recognise this. I can recognise that. Um, and it's actually having... All the rest of the pieces put together that really really gives you control really over what you're doing and that that it does it just makes a huge huge difference mm. yeah thanks Jude. Thank you. Yeah, it does it, i mean one-to-one -one, it's very different because it's very personalized to how your doshas are combining and that was fantastic to get that confirmation also from Jude about you know really adapting our lifestyle no matter what type we are being aware of the nature of the season and so, yes, then when we get to kapha, we want to be moving the body. So if we move the lymphatics and we move our body and we eat a diet that's giving the lymphatics a chance to clear congestion out of the system, then we've got more energy. First of all, we're less susceptible to the illnesses going around at that time of year. And then also we have more energy for the naturally more active time of year in the later spring and the summer. And then in the summer, we want to be aware, of course, of not being overly taken by this sudden surge of energy that the sun and the longer days can give us. So, yes, we really want to enjoy it. We want to flourish and, and celebrate and enjoy the riches and the bounty of life that summer brings. But I mentioned it, I think, again today in class, even though it's a pitter season, this nature of the long days and the light and more activity that can set the batter up. So we need to also be in awareness there. So I've got two notes here. 
So times of transition from one season to another are times when we're said to be most vulnerable because there's movement, right? And when there's movement, what do you think is going up? Vata dosha. Even if you're not, you know, so these are, and vata is more vulnerable. So these are times when we need to be particularly vigilant with our lifestyle and careful with us. And so at the seasonal junctures, be more um, like taking care of that vata dosha, doing less, slowing down, taking time to rest and nurture. The seasonal junctures are the major junctures are the equinoxes and the solstices. So we've got an equinox coming up and a few weeks before it in September, it will be here before we know it, a few weeks before it, and or maybe like 10 days before and 10 days after, we want to be very careful. And because we're moving from a time of year when the days are longer than the nights to when the nights are longer than the days, and that's a big shift for our system, okay? So think Vata at those times. And then the other time is the solstices, when the sun changes its journey, either journeying south, starts journeying south after the summer solstice, and after the winter solstice, it starts journeying north. This also has a big impact on us. But particularly these um, equinoxes, right, with the change for us with the, in this climate particularly, with the change in the daylight. And so Ayurveda also recommends in this seat that seasonal cleansing, and it would be a good time to do it around those junctures. So like in spring, we all know spring cleansing, so I'm going to take that as an example, because we're getting out of the system the excess kapha dosha. So that heaviness we feel in the late winter, we don't carry with us through the rest of the year. Okay, and it doesn't congest the system and impair optimal functioning of your organs and your doshas. So spring and autumn are good times to cleanse. And I do have an autumn cleanse coming up, but you know, I will send you information on that. The time's moving on. So I want us to come through this and we're nearly at the end. What can you do to, you know, as well as like working with awareness of the seasons? Jude and I also already mentioned a little bit this Ayurveda yoga class that I'm doing in the mornings. If you can, please join us. Just trial it for a week. Or, well, actually, I mean, people say they feel the effects very quickly. But if you can give yourself a month and feel the and notice what happens, fantastic. If you can give yourself a season on the program, really, I think you will feel that it's strengthening. Because we're, the way we work, we're not only strengthening the body. We're working with the prana. We're working with the doshas. It's quite a fundamental strengthening of your system. And you'll get the guidance to adjust your lifestyle along the way accordingly. There's a seasonal cleansing. And then, as um, Jude just mentioned, there's the Ayurveda one-to-one -one coaching. And the Ayurveda, okay, we'll get to this. This thing I loved. The great thing about Ayurveda is that its treatments always yield side benefits, not side effects which kind of echoes that previous quote that, you know, you open up to these, um, you know, different dimensions and experiences of yourself as you nurture your own strengths, inherent strengths. And that really is what my new logo is about, really, that, um, you know, when we come to that satva, when we come into balance, um, what we have available to us, you know, the realization of the self and the white peacock is symbolic of the realized self, of the awakening to our ultimate like, potential and essential nature. Um, just at the bottom there, you know, with the Ayurveda coaching, not only the consultation you can come for, but I'll treat with body treatments, herbal oils and pastes and things for your type. You can do the Ayurveda yoga therapy. You'll get nutritional and herbal therapy. So if you're happy just to come along with this right now and do the odd workshop and things, absolutely fine. But of course, if you think I would really like to have a personalized program, come. 
And maybe I'll start doing a few little Ayurveda courses just once a week coming so you can, or online, so you can learn, you know, yeah, how do I eat for my type? I think it's more appropriate to give you that kind of guidance more, um, you know, when we've got more time with each other. But really, like Jude said, the one-to-one is the best because we can really look at your personal history and where you are now. All right, I'm sorry we stayed for much longer than I intended to, but please leave if you need to leave. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can, of course, ask them and I'll stop the share now. Anyone? Was that Amelia? Uh, Sharon, did you put your hand up? Or you... No, I was just gonna say thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Amelia, yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, Martina. <laughs> um, anyone? Any questions? No? Okay. Well, please, someone? Yeah, it's Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. Hi. Um, I think you said before that some people were the same current and, um, and like, pre no. Your present constitution, your lifetime constitution, didn't vary much. Is that quite common? Um, well, I didn't... Our, our lifestyle, our lifestyle, even if your current situation is different, what you've got in your questionnaire, if it looked different for current to lifelong, you still are the same constitutional type. That's never going to change. But what can happen is that because of lifestyle, because of diet, because of environmental factors, because of the way we use our mind and our senses, as we've seen, we can get more, um, the, the other doshas can go up. And that needs taking care of because you will get symptoms accordingly. Yeah. But you are always that um, uh, yeah. constitutional type that never changes. I was quite surprised because I didn't put the same answers to the questions on both sides, and yet they've come out at the end the same. Okay. <laughs> um, that could, could indicate imbalances, which I probably need to talk about. Yeah, and you know, we'd re like some things never change, do they? Like our structure will never change. Generally, our, meta our digestive nature never changes. It might get aggravated, it might go awry, but... Um, yeah. No, as we get older, we might not be able to digest as well, but certain things don't change. I'll be more aware now, and thank you. Good, good. I'm sorry about my red lines. Doesn't matter. <laughs> They're probably only on my screen. They might not be on yours now. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe. It was strange. It came on every slide. Who knows how these things work? It's okay, though, Rosemary. Really. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Or shall we? One more. Is it making sense? Yeah. Yeah. Good, isn't it? It's a good way to think about life and the nature and the seasons. I have a question oh. to ask, Sarah. Oh, you go. Anna? Oh, Joe, hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask you a question because I think I said to you before I get really bad hay fever and I have this horrible illness and I always always get worse literally the last week in August the beginning of September that must be the shift like which is the time that the the pitta thing is is the worst time for me so that just makes so much sense yeah but I'm trying to think what can I do now because it's coming up next week that's that what can I do this week just to help yeah um yeah it's like the pitta has accumulated in the body yeah and the vata is rising as well and if you mm. think about air fanning flames mm. um, so I just I work there for a week and not come out <laughs> no don't do that just hibernate your vata Take care of your vata mm. and avoid foods that are going to aggravate the pitta. So just briefly, I know it's difficult because this time is short, but just a snapshot. 
what should I definitely avoid and what should I definitely try to do? I can't really say that, Emma, definitely, uh, particularly if you, you have a condition. But mm. if you think in terms of the foods that you're eating, so think in terms of um, oily and hot foods and yeah. junk, I'm sure you're not eating. Try yeah. to avoid that. Okay. Uh, you know, just go for nourishing whole foods. Sure, okay. Um, and the not your hot spices. And your lifestyle, the balance and the regularity in your daily rhythm and okay. sure you get good sleep. I would come for a consultation. And, yeah, I, I will do. I'm, I'm going to do that. I can, it definitely is making sense to me. Thank you. can really help. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sharma, modern, yeah. li modern life has really disrupted all, the, all of this, hasn't it? Because... In, in past times, we would have gone to sleep when the sun went down, we'd have got up with the sun and we'd have only eaten seasonal vegetables and things, whereas now Absolutely. everything's available all year round. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so we're making choices that are probably wrong for our types, whereas in the past we wouldn't have even had those choices, would we? No, and we would have, and I think since I've been doing Ayurveda, I think how wonderful all the festive foods, like our traditional festive foods, mm -hmm. No, and I would, I can't do it here, but I would like to look at it more in depth with you. Like when to eat your high proteins. Actually, I can do it very briefly now. So I've already said spring, you're eating the shoots, you're eating the light drying foods. Mm. There, we don't want a high fat or a high protein diet all year round. And these fad diets, I'm sorry, but they need to look at the seasons because it's okay in a certain time of year and for a certain type of person when you're excluding some food groups and not other, and you know, but favoring others. But high fat diet, high protein diet, our ancestors were doing that in the winter, right? And they were doing it for the strength and resilience, but they couldn't stay healthy and do that all year round. And also, you know, they were curing the meats, they were fermenting the foods because they're heating then. Mm. And we eat fermented foods, like Joanna was saying, all year round now. And yeah. so if you're eating fermented foods, which are heating in a pitta season, and you already have pitta stuff going on, then you're going to get symptoms. You know, like if you have, like I've got actually, and when things go into your skin, it's really hard to get rid of. And I thought, oh, I'll have a little bit of coconut yogurt, you know. It's fermented, but it won't hurt. The coconut's cooling. And I bought a different brand, and it was a little more sour, which should have been the clue, because sour is acidic, and acidic is heating. And my skin's itching like mad after it, you know. Mm. So, and it's a pitta season, and it's a pitta thing, because it's hot, it's itching. So, yeah, and then in the summer, you know, carbs the grains are flourishing so it's a high carb time of year enjoy your pastas in the summer mm -hmm. which fits in with the mediterranean diet which is, yes which right. is in a hot country yeah and which gives us the energy for all the activity we're involved in yeah so it all make it all makes sense really we've just dis, as humans decided to yeah. go against nature really haven't we and the dry fruits in our desserts for winter, Christmas pudding, minced meat in the mince pies, you know, really nourishing and feeding for the vata with all the nuts and everything in there as well. Mm -hmm. It's amazing when you think about it. Mm -hmm. And the fermented foods heating, vata's cold. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I think we should yeah, thank you. call it a day because we've really gone on long, but it's been fantastic to be with you all. And I'm really... Um, like uh, touched and moved and really happy about your enthusiasm for Ayurveda because it is a fantastically empowering system and to try and persuade you to take it on board when you don't really know what it is, is has been frustrating and so this is a great way so you can this is an education also Ayurveda because it's a way of life so thank you for staying with us so long Thank you. Uh, I hope you can join next week and we'll come a little bit more deeply into this system with me. Okay. Thank all you. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.